are about to listen to a message from Root River Community Church. If you live in the Rushford, Minnesota area and do not have a church home, we would love to have you at one of our Sunday morning services. For more information about our church, visit our website at rootriver.org. We hope and pray that God speaks to you through this message. I want to start a new series this morning called This is Living. It really kind of comes throughout, from a theme throughout Ephesians, uh, highlighted in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, when it says that we are once dead, but through Christ, He has made us what? He's made us alive. And so if you really want to live life, you need to live for Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And you're not really living until you're living for Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, it says this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Jesus Christ. He's saying that these are people who have decided to follow Jesus Christ. They're not living on their own anymore. They're not living for the world anymore. They're not dead, stuck in their sin. They have decided to follow Jesus Christ, to live with Christ, and now they have been made alive. And if you look at uh, the area of Ephesus, you're going to see, if you study the biblical history of it, you're going to see that these were pagan people. It was a pagan area, a pagan city. Uh, they worshiped pagan gods, and it was kind of the epicenter of all pagan worship. But these were men, these were women that Paul is writing to who, have, who decided to live with Jesus Christ. So it goes on to say in verse 2, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now tune into verse 3. It says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with how many spiritual blessings? Is it one spiritual blessing? You think it's two spiritual blessings? How many would be okay with if it was just three spiritual blessings? Okay, It says every single spiritual blessing blessing in Christ. Paul's saying, hey, you can live your life on your own, but if you live for Jesus Christ alone, that's real living. Because with that comes every single spiritual blessing. So I want to title this message here this morning, Living on Your Own versus Living with Christ. And students, I was kind of thinking about you this morning the, the people just up on the stage with me, how you just uh, finished uh, school and living underneath your parents' roof, and now you're kind of excited probably about going out in the future, near future, and living on your own. So me, with that transition of living underneath my parents' house and just kind of finishing high school and then going off to college, uh, I, I was really excited. I was kind of excited to live away from my parents. I love my parents and everything, but I was just excited to go out and to live on my own. I was excited to live on my own time. I was, a lot, I was excited to live on my own schedule. I was excited to live on my own rules, so to speak. I was excited to live on my own money. But then I realized I didn't have any money. No money whatsoever. And students, you're not going to have any money either. So students, Chris and I, after much prayer and fasting, much prayer and fasting, I'm kind of being facetious, we kind of thought about just one piece of advice to give you. And we know that you're excited to go out, to grab the world by its horns, to move away, to be out living on your own. And we would just tell you this, when you walk out your parents' door, I would just encourage you to turn around and walk right back in and just live with them for as long as possible. <laughs> I mean, just, just milk it for as long as possible, okay? You got it good. You, you, got, you got it good there, okay? You're going you're gonna to know that uh, sooner or later that everybody thinks that you're really... <laughs> Kevin Feller's like, get out, get out. <laughs> Some of your parents are like, Mike. 
But uh, you're going to realize that everyone thinks that you're not really living until you're living on your own. But you're going to realize that living on your own is just surviving. That's not living at all. Uh, I remember uh, growing or kind of going off to North Central University and uh, there's no meal plans. Or there, there's a meal plan, but my meal plan it only had 10 meals. And then on Sunday evening, there is no meal. So all these students were like running around crazy because we didn't have any food. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, you're going to go to college or you're going to go on to wherever you're going and you think that you're going to go and learn something. All you're really going to learn is like 25 different ways to cook mac and cheese, okay? <laughs> and 40 different ways to eat ramen noodles. And then you're just going to get so tired that you're just going to eat it like a big cracker or something like that. <laughs> you're going to realize that uh, you're going to go out on your own and then uh, you're going to be like, all this dirty laundry is going to be piling up. And you're going to realize like, how do I wash my clothes? I got no spot to wash my clothes. How many parents know that all your kids do is they come home with like five laundry baskets ready to be washed, okay? Uh, I remember going to college and uh, not having a spot to do my laundry. And so I had this one towel. I had one towel, okay? And it lasted me a whole semester of college. And it just hung up kind of in my door, on the hinges of my door, I remember, and it was just gross by the end of it. I'm just telling you, you had it good living with your parents, okay? Living underneath their roof. You're not on your own, but you're living underneath your parents' roof and the blessings that come with it. And this is just a message that kind of relates to that. Uh, living on your own versus living with Christ alone. Living under your own roof, having it your own way, or living underneath the blessings of God. How many spiritual blessings? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, was it 2? I forget, was it 3? Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. I think about the prodigal son that we read about in Scripture, how he left home early and he wanted to go out on his own and kind of make a name for himself. But it didn't take him very long to realize that he had everything that he needed back at his father's house. And so he, what did he do? He went and he returned to live underneath his father's roof, underneath the blessings that came with his father. Now that is living. And Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 1, this is for God's people. This is for God's people. This is for people who have decided to live with God, to not live on their own, but to live with God. You're going to receive all that you need. You're going to receive every single spiritual blessing. There is no life outside of living apart from Christ. If you truly want to live, you need to live for Christ. If you truly want to live, you need to live not out on your own, but live with Christ alone. Amen? Amen. Come on, amen? amen? Amen. You got every spiritual blessing when you're living with Christ. So here's uh, three different spiritual blessings that kind of come. The first one is provision. When you're living with Christ, it means you're living underneath his provision. Second Peter uh, 1 verse 3 says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So when you're living with Christ, you're going to be living underneath his provision. That's one of the spiritual blessings. So when you're living back at your parents' house, as some of you might remember this, you're going to remember that uh, you just had everything that you really ever needed. I mean, I, I know for me growing up, at least, like I never had to buy anything. I was kind of one of those spoiled kids. I'll admit it. I was one of those spoiled kids who never bought like a vehicle, who never bought or paid for your own insurance or anything like that. I never had to fill up a gas tank uh, on my own or anything like that. I drove around my parents' huge Chevy Suburban and just it went through gas, gallon of gas after gallon of gas. I didn't think about it at all. I'd drive all over and I, di I didn't worry about it because it was all provided for me. I was living underneath my parents' uh, roof. I remember, uh, you know, the food that we had. It was like unlimited amounts of food. And some of you parents, you need to, you're like food hoarders, okay? If you're like my parents, you've got like, your fridge is stuffed 
full of food. You can't fit anything more in it. I'm looking at Dwayne and Shirley right now. And, and then you got this big pantry of food, okay? It, and then food everywhere, like food in the mud closet and food in this closet. And then you've got like, you don't just need one deep freeze, right? You gotta have two deep freezes. Okay, Julie knows. You gotta have two deep freezes stuffed with food. My mom's deep freeze is all the way to the top, filled with food. She has to put a big box on top of the freezer just to lock it down and keep it air tight. And I remember growing up this way. I never had to worry about food. I never had to worry about uh, being provided for or anything like that. My parents, they went above and beyond. I remember that they bought me uh, every year a season a ski pass to the local ski resort. I remember during the summers every year they bought me a season golf pass. I'm just saying, I had it pretty good, okay? And then you go out on your own and you're like, that's how much a gallon of milk costs? Wow. That's amazing. And you open up your fridge each time, like hoping that the fridge fairy came and delivered a bunch of food, but it's still not there. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I worked, you know, throughout high school and stuff from, from an early age, 13 or 14. I had a job, I had two jobs, I worked a lot. But my dad always told me, Mike, uh, you just save your money. You work hard, and as long as you do that, don't worry about providing for yourself these basic things. I'm going to provide them for you. And I think when you live underneath Jesus Christ, right, when you live underneath Jesus Christ, it comes with that kind of provision. And he tells you, hey, you need to go out and you need to work hard. You need to go. You can't be a sluggard all your life. You've got to work hard. But when you do your part, I'm going to do my part. And every spiritual blessing is going to come your way when you're living underneath my parameters and my roof. And one of those spiritual blessings is going to be provision. He says in Matthew 6, he says, who takes care of the birds? of the air? Who takes care of the lilies in the field? Do not I care about these things, and do I not care about you so much more? He says, I'm going to provide for you. Maybe that's a word for you this morning. He's going to provide, but you got to live, or live underneath his roof. You can't live out on your own anymore. you got to return to the Father's house. I was thinking about my dad and how he didn't just provide like the basic, essential things for us. He didn't just provide the essential things like a ski pass <laughs> and a golf pass. Come on, nobody's laughing at my jokes this morning. <laughs> he didn't just provide food and water or shelter or something like that. He provided phones, internet, a cable. We had like this upgraded super duper cable package. We had like 10,000 channels. Like, I, it was crazy. We had like 14 different channels of ESPN. I mean, we had everything. Everything. It was like the upgraded package. And I was thinking about in the same way how God doesn't just provide the basic things that you need in life. But when you're living underneath his parameters, when you're living for Christ, that means he's going to provide for you everything, even things that you might not need. And so you say, hey, I, I, I don't just need some financial provision right now. I need some emotional provision right now. God, I'm feeling kind of down. I need some joy. I need the joy of the Lord to be my strength. And, he, and you might say, I'm feeling kind of stressed out right now. And you say, God, I, I need some peace in my life that transcends my understanding. And you say, God, I'm feeling kind of fearful right now. And you say, I, I I know you've not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a strong and sound mind. Now that is living. It's living underneath Christ's blessing. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, now that's living. Now that's living. I want to live underneath Christ. Here's the second thing. Living with Christ means living underneath his protection, the spiritual blessing of protection. Growing up, I lived in uh, a town called Osceola, Wisconsin. It was very similar to Rushford. It was about 2,000 people. But we didn't live like in town. We lived outside of town in an unincorporated town. It, so we lived like next to Hart. It's the real middle of nowhere, okay? 
And, and we just lived out kind of in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of this woods, and nobody really came by the house or anything like that. I just always felt very protected. But my dad didn't just stop there. He, he went out and he put locks on the doors. We were one of those families like who locked the door all the time. You know, if we like ran to the store for five minutes, we're locking the door. But we don't just lock the door. My dad has an alarm system on the house, okay? So we don't just lock the door. We turn on the alarm system. So it's got this keypad. It's got motion sensors. My dad had guns. He had a barbed wire fence all the way around the house and guard dogs and tanks. No, I'm just joking about the last few things. Uh, but I, but I, just growing up, I was very protected. That was one of the blessings of growing up where I did. I was living it large, underneath my dad's house, living protected. And then Krista and I, uh, we went, or, or I went by myself and I met her there, we went to North Central University, which is in downtown Minneapolis. And I didn't really know what being scared meant until I moved a block off Chicago Avenue in downtown Minneapolis. Kids getting mugged in the park. I didn't know what getting mugged meant in the park. Gangs, drugs, gunshots. And I know Brittany Cuss is going to North Central, so we're gonna lay hands on her after the service <laughs> and pray over her, okay? I remember uh, Krista and I, we'd go out street wit witnessing uh, in Minneapolis at night. And uh, this one time, I happened to be by myself, and it was probably like 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, and I remember this guy's name. His name was Kevin. And I was talking to Kevin about the Lord. And Kevin, he wore this, like, long trench coat, and he was probably, like, mid-40s or something like that. And we're talking. We're sitting in this park. Nobody else is around us, okay? It's dark. And all of a sudden, Kevin opens up his trench coat, and he's got, like, tons of knives, like, in the trench coat. And I think to myself, <laughs> I didn't see that in East Farmington growing up. I mean, like, living on your own, I felt very unprotected, okay? And when you're living outside of Christ, you're not living under the blessing of His protection. So if you want to be protected, if you want to feel secure, you need to live under Christ and under the blessing of his protection. I was thinking about David in the Old Testament, how David, he was a man who lived for Christ. And then all throughout his life, God protected him. A lion came his way. Chris and I just went to the zoo in Wisconsin Dells. We took the kids, and we saw these huge lions. And I was thinking about David fighting this lion. But, but David was living underneath Christ, and underneath Christ's blessing of protection. And through that process, David was protected. And then a bear comes, and David is protected. And then we all know that this huge nine-and-a-half-foot-tall man comes David's way named Goliath. But yet David, again, he's protected by God. He's living underneath God's blessing of protection. And then Saul comes, and Saul is jealous of David, and Saul tries to kill David and harm David. But all along, you see Jesus' protection over David. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you might have what? Life. Now that's living. He says, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. When you're living underneath Jesus, you can say, bring it on. Bring it on. You can say, I don't live for myself anymore. I moved in with the king of all kings who controls the universe, who made the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the galaxy. I'm living underneath his protection. Growing up, uh, my dad's security system uh, when it would get set off, it would have like this annoying beep. Anybody have a security system, home security system? Do you know what I'm talking about? This annoying beep. Nobody here does. We live in Rushford, yeah. Why would we have it? My dad did. So uh, this annoying beep, like And then this voice came over at the intercom all throughout the house, and it said, intruder, intruder. Intruder, alert, 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 intruder. And then I'd go back to eh, 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 super loud. And I was thinking about how when we're living uh, for Christ, we have this home security system built into us, and it's called the Holy Spirit. And danger comes our way. Sin comes our way. And this voice inside of us 
comes on the intercom of our lives and says, alert, 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 intruder, intruder, intruder. That's the kind of blessing that comes with living for Christ. That's the kind of protection that comes with living for Christ. Don't try to live life on your own anymore. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, I'm living under God's protection. Can you say that to your neighbor? Here's the last thing I want to say this morning. Living with Christ means living under His plan. Living underneath His plan. Ephesians 1, it goes on to say in verse 11, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to what? To His plan. Living for Christ means living underneath His plan. Living on your own, it can be hard. And you graduates in the room at your graduation parties, I bet every person came up to you and said, so what's your plan? What's your plan? Oh, that's nice. What's your plan? Oh, that's congratulations. Awesome. Good job graduating. So what's your plan? What's your plan for the fall? What's your plan for life? What's your plan? I remember in my graduation party, I just kept hearing that over and over again. Until you're kind of like sick of it, okay? And you, you just say like, okay, just drop the card over there. And <laughs> I'm joking. But that, that question, what's your plan? What's your plan? And some of you adults in the room, you still don't know the plan. You're just kind of like me. You're making it up as you go. You're like, ah, I don't know. That sounds good over there. We'll go with that plan. Over there, Krista and I, we were trying to remodel our house a little bit, and people keep asking me, so what's your plan? And I'm like, well, to be honest, I'm kind of winging it, okay? I don't have really much of a plan, okay? When you're living on your own, that's the way you're kind of living, and, and this plan thing comes up all the time. People ask you different questions. They ask you, what's your saving, savings plan? What's your insurance plan? What's your retirement plan? What's your plan to pay off your mortgage? What's your plan to pay off your car? What's your plan to save for your kid's college? What's your plan as your parents get older? What's the plan for them? What's the plan for you as you get older? And there's all these like plans that we need to make. And I was just thinking about how like growing up, that's really living, is when you don't have to plan anything. Like my kids, they don't plan nothing. We plan everything. They say, what are we doing today? We say, well, we're going here. They say, what are we doing today? Well, we're going here. They just ride around, around in the back of the Suburban all over. They don't even know where we're going, but mom and dad are taking them somewhere. And sometimes we look back in the rear view mirror and we say, wouldn't that be nice to like just sit in the back seat and not have to worry about anything? You don't have to, you don't have to worry about provision. You don't have to worry about protection. You don't have to worry about the plan. The parents have the plan underneath uh, control. And we say to, uh, you know, you kind of say to your kids growing up, like, here's the plan for the next 18 years, okay? You don't have to think very far ahead. You don't have to think very long. You just kind of do what we tell you to do. Here's the plan. You're going to go to school. You're going to learn this. You're going to love God. Here's the plan. Here's the plan. And that's a blessing that really comes when you're living underneath your parents' household still. And that's the blessing that comes when you're living underneath Christ. You don't have to worry about the plan. And to wrap this up this morning, I want to invite Mona up to play for us a little bit. I was thinking about uh, back to David again in the Old Testament. And I was thinking about, uh, I was kind of reading into the story a little bit. So this is actually like isn't in the Word of God. Okay, this is just like me like reading into the story a little bit. Uh, but I was thinking about like, David's brothers, older brothers, they're trying to make a name for themselves. They're probably about to go out on their own, and they look at David, and maybe they say something like, hey, David, what's your plan? You're just going to, like, watch sheep for the rest of your life, or what? You're just going to hang out, be a shepherd boy all your life? But David was living for God. And what if he said something like, and again, this isn't scripture. This is just like me reading into the story. What if he said something like, you know, I don't know what the plan is. Because I know that God's got a plan for me. And I'm just going to go along with what God's got for me. And maybe his brothers kind of scoff, like, 
some, some plan that is, you know. But then all of a sudden, the prophet Samuel shows up at Jesse's house, and Jesse is David, his, his dad. And Samuel shows up, and he says, Hey, uh, I'm here to anoint the next king. So bring out all your sons. And, and all the sons are like, This is awesome. And David's not even there. He's still out tending the sheep. And they get through all the sons. You know the story. Samuel gets through all the sons. And he says, No, this... There, none of these. Is there any more? And, of course, David, he's out in the field. And so Samuel goes and he anoints David to be king. And I wonder if David just said a little bit to his brothers, like, see, that's why I don't make my own plans. Because I know that out of the blue, God's going to reveal his plan to me. And I'm going to trust it. I'm going to walk in it. I don't have to worry about planning different things. I know that God has it all under control. Well, what if the plan doesn't go according to plan? You see that in David's life. He was anointed to be king, but it took him 15 years to actually become king. Throughout the process, he lost his best friend. His wife, Michael, the Bible says that she despised him in her heart. He lost one of his sons. He was betrayed by another one of his sons, almost losing his entire kingdom. So what happens when the plan doesn't go according to plan? Do you still want to live underneath Christ? Do you still want to live underneath his blessing? Or would you rather go out on your own? David's stuck with God. And he said, God, whether good times come, whether bad times come, blessed is the name of the Lord. I will trust you. I know that you will always provide for me. I know that you will always protect me. And I know that even when the plan doesn't go my way, I know that what it says in Ephesians 1, that I'm still spiritually blessed and that you are working out your plan for my life. I just want to encourage you guys this morning to just not live on your own. And what does that mean? That means even in this moment, you just surrender your heart to God and you say, God, I just want to live for you all the days of my life. And it means that you live under his uh, protection and blessing. And it means that you live under his plan, but also means that you have to live underneath his parameters that are found in the word of God. You choose to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Friends, you're not really living until you're living for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? So, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you how it teaches us how to live. Lord, I pray for people's hearts here this morning. I pray that all of us would just surrender to you a little bit more. We'd surrender our life to you. We'd surrender our heart to you. We'd surrender our will to you, we'd say, God, I don't want to live on my own anymore. I want to live your way. I want to live for you alone. And again, if there's anybody here in the room who just is praying that with me, would you just stick up your hand just as a commitment to God, just saying, God, I want to live for you. I want to live for you. Awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. We pray that you'd continue to do good work in our hearts. Lord, I want to take a moment to just pray over this congregation, to pray blessing over them, that you would bless everything that they set their hands to, that you would bless their marriages, that you would bless their families, their children, their grandchildren. Lord, I pray for some parents in the room who maybe just heard that their kids want to get a divorce. I pray that you'd be with them, that you'd give them the words to say, that they would continue to trust you, that you'd re restore what is broken. We love you, Father. You just listened to a message from Root River Community Church. For more information about our church or how to make Jesus the Lord of your life, visit our website at rootriver.org.